Morning, you four. Hope you're all OK. Today in English, we are going to be writing a recount and it's going to be based on the book Woof. And we've all read Woof. We read it in term three. Um, all about Eric and how he turns into a dog and back into a human again and, and all the funny things that go with it. So I'm going to read you chapter one. And then once we've finished, we're going to look at how we can um, create our own recount, thinking about if we could turn into any animal, what animal we would turn into. Okay. There was once a boy who turned into a dog. This doesn't happen every day. If it did, the world would soon be short of boys and overrun with dogs. What's more, it would hardly be a story worth telling. It would be like, there was once a boy who had his breakfast, or there was once a boy who walked down the road. Luckily, the storytellers, that isn't the way of it. There are common happenings in this world and uncommon. So, there was once a boy who turned into a dog. The boy's name was Eric Banks. He was 10 years old. The dog he turned into was a Norfolk Terrier. Eric Banks was a quiet boy most of the time. Steady worker. Methodical, his school report said. He was the kind of boy who didn't make a rush for the back seat of the bus or go mad when the first snow fell. He was left handed, right footed and rather small for his age. He had freckles. Eric lived with his parents and his little sister. Her name was Emily. She was three. His dad was a postman. His mum had a part time job in the shop. Eric himself had a paper round which he shared with his friend Roy Aikerman. Actually, he was too young to have the round. It belonged to his cousin, but she had broken her arm. And Eric's dad was a friend of the newsagent. So Eric was standing in. Eric first turned into a dog a little at a time in his own bed. His parents were downstairs watching television. His sister was fast asleep in the next room. The time was ten past nine. The day, Wednesday, the month, June. Until then, it had been a normal day for Eric. He'd done his paper round with Roy and gone to school. He'd had two helpings of his favourite dinner. He'd played with Emily before tea and Roy after. He'd watched television, had a shower and gone to bed. Now he was in bed and turning into a dog. It happened like this. Eric was laying on his side with his eyes closed. He was almost asleep. Suddenly, he felt an itch inside the collar of his pyjama jacket. This, although he didn't know it yet, was the fur sprouting. He felt a curious tingling in his hands and feet. This was his hands and feet turning into paws. He felt his nose becoming cold and wet. His ears becoming flappy. Eric opened his eyes. He didn't panic straight away. This was his nature, partly, but also he was still half asleep. The thought in his mind was, and turning into a dog. That was another thing about Eric. He was a good guesser. When Emily first learned to talk, it was usually Eric who guessed what she was trying to say. He could guess the mood his teacher was in, just from the way she held her hymn book in assembly. Now, on the evidence of a furry paw where his hand was, he guessed he was turning into a dog. He didn't suppose he was turning into a werewolf, for instance, which is what Roy Aikerman would have thought. He didn't suppose he was dreaming either, which he was not. The time it took Eric to turn into a dog, his shape blurring and rippling like a swimmer underwater, was about 15 seconds. The time it took him to become frantic was about five seconds after that. His first action was to begin scrabbling in the bed, trying to get a better look at himself. His thoughts were in a turmoil. I'm a dog. I'm a dog. The next thing he did was to try and get out of bed. This wasn't easy for a dog in pyjamas. Besides, they were baggy on him now. Eric leapt and landed in a heap. He kicked his way clear of the trousers and backed out of his jacket. He resisted the urge to growl when one of his claws got caught in a buttonhole. He sat on the floor and thought, I'm a dog. It was now quarter past nine. The last of the evening sunlight was shining through the green curtains. Everything in the room, furniture and wallpaper, Eric's books and toys, his junior science kit, 
his clothes laid out on a chair beside the bed was tinged with green light. Birds were chirping outside the window. Next door, Mr Phipps was mowing his lawn. Eric got to his feet, all four of them, and walked uncertainly across the room. He put his front paws on the dressing table and stared into the mirror. A furry, rather surprised looking face stared back. I don't believe it, he thought. And then, I look like a Norfolk Terrier. Eric knew about dogs. He'd done a project on them with Roy in the second year. Once more, Eric sat on the floor. He was bewildered to say the least. A confusion of questions jostled in his head. How could it happen? What's the cause of it? Why me? He went to the window, put his paws on the sill, ducked his head under the curtain and looked out. Mr Phipps was emptying the grass cuttings onto a compost heap. A wisp of blue smoke was rising from a bonfire in the next garden along. Eric left the window and with no clear aim in mind, nudged open the door with his head. He went onto the landing. He couldn't see much, it was gloomy, but he could smell all kinds of things. There were biscuit crumbs in the carpet. There was talcum powder. He felt the urge to sniff around. Soon he came upon a chocolate button, which his sister must have dropped. He'd been eating them and she'd been eating them earlier that evening. Eric studied the button. At that moment, the thought in his mind was, being a dog might not be all that bad. And he ate it up. Okay, so now that we've heard the chapter of Woof, um, the part where Eric obviously turned into a dog for the first time, we can use those ideas to help us with our own recount. So as I said earlier, your challenge today is to write about the time that you turned into an animal of your choice. So before we begin, let's remind ourselves of what we need to include in a recount. It's so basically a recount is to retell events. So it's writing about something that's already happened. In a recount, we need to make sure that the opening is a bit of a scene setter. So we add just some information for the reader for a bit of context. And we'll be recounting the events as they occurred as well. So it needs to be in chronological order. So whatever happens first, of course, will be the first thing you write about. And then you'll continue to write in the order in which it happened. Obviously, because the events already happened, you're going to be writing in past tense. And recounts are usually first person or third person. In this case, because you're going to be writing about you turning into an animal, it will be in first person. And finally, we want to make sure that we use conjunctions in our writing because it adds more detail to what we're saying. Um, conjunctions can also be time conjunctions as well. So we might use words such as first, next, after that, just then, suddenly. Those types of words are all examples of time conjunctions, which help us write in chronological order. Before we have a look at an example, let's remind ourselves what actually happened to Eric, because those clues can help us um, make our own, basically, for, for the animal of our choice. So what happened to Eric? Well, we know that he had an itch the inside of the collar of his pyjamas. So just there. And he felt like a curious tingling, didn't he, in his hands and feet. His nose becoming cold and wet and his ears becoming flappy. So these were all telltale signs that something wasn't quite right with Eric. Um, and then it said, his shape blurring and rippling like a swimmer underwater. And that's a lovely description, isn't it? Using a simile. It just means that it creates a really clear picture in our mind about exactly what's happening to Eric when he's turning into a dog. OK, so when you start your recount, obviously we want an opening. So your first paragraph is going to be um, setting the scene, giving the reader some context as to where you are, um, maybe what you what you were up to at the time. 
Um, and also we want to make sure as well that it's in first person because you're going to be writing about you. So, for example, here's my opening. It says it was 8.30 p.m. on a regular Wednesday night when I first turned into a cat. I had just watched EastEnders with my mum, dad and older sister, Amy. Mum told me to get ready for bed, so I trudged upstairs and wandered into the bathroom to brush my teeth. OK, so if I choose this. So as you can see, first person means that you're using the pronouns I, OK, or my or me. There we are. But that will show you that that's in first person. And just a bit of extra info um, information, you can see that I've written uh, the time and when it happened. So kind of answering some of those five W's that you would do if you're writing a newspaper article, for instance, just given a bit of extra information and um, including specific people in my recount as well. So for me, my mum, my dad, sister um, and recounting the events. OK, it's very similar to the diary entry, to be honest. Um, so I've said what I was up to. I've said what I did next. And finally, you want to make sure as well that you're not just using words such as I went upstairs. I went to the bathroom. I went into my bedroom. We want to try and use some alternative verbs to make our writing more interesting. So you can see here, watched, trudged, wandered. So every time I'm tempted to use the word went, I want to use an alternative verb. All right, so recount of events. As we've said already, a recount, you're going to be retelling something that's already happened. So you want to be writing about it in order. You want to use interesting detail to make your events sound, um, well, more interesting, basically. When I was brushing, my neck began to feel hot and itchy. Then. I felt a strange tingling sensation in my hands and feet. To start with, I thought nothing of it, spat out my toothpaste and rinsed my mouth out with minty mouthwash. So I'm just writing about what happened. OK, so what I've wanted to do as well is I've wanted to use some time conjunctions. OK, so while I was brushing, then. Also, sentence starters here to, to start with or, or to begin with. Um, and just adding detail about what I'm up to as well. So I spat out my toothpaste and rinsed my mouth out with minty mouthwash. Yeah, so you just want to you just want to add detail about your evening. And it, it shows as well that it's just like any normal day, isn't it? There's nothing extraordinary about what's going on here until obviously. Um, the telltale signs of turning into an animal happens. All right, so chronological order, past tense. OK, so after I washed my face, I plodded slowly into my bedroom and felt prickles on the back of my neck and ears. I peered at my reflection in the mirror and turned my head towards my shoulder to inspect the area more closely. In disbelief, I rubbed my eyes furiously and looked again. I was sprouting black and white fur. Let's look for where we've used chronological order and past tense. So here we've got after, which tells you the order in which things are happening. Past tense, we've got washed. We've got plodded. Felt, okay, peered, turned, rubbed, looked. Okay. And then here I was, I was sprouting black and white fur. So make it consistent, okay? It's an event that's already happened, so all of your verbs need to be in past tense.
when it comes to writing in chronological order, what we can do is use this. Oh, if I show you this one, um, we can use conjunctions and other connectives to help us. So especially this column here, when, that will help you write your events in order. So if we now go back to my last example paragraph, this is where I have tried to use conjunctions so you can see that we're joining ideas together to make our writing sound more interesting. All right, so it says, meanwhile, mum crawled up the stairs. Are you in bed yet? So I hastily replied, yeah, mum, night, and slammed the door shut. I had an anxious feeling in my stomach. Just then, I looked down at my feet in horror as I noticed they were turning into cat paws. So here I've used a time conjunction, meanwhile, OK, and then here, so I hastily replied and slammed the door shut. OK, and then we've got just then, another time conjunction. I looked down at my feet in horror as I noticed they were turning into cat paws. So you're varying your sentence length by using conjunctions. It just means that you don't have to keep using lots of short, sharp sentences. And it improves the flow when you read it as well. So there we are. I've written an example. It's obviously not finished. It, it's just to identify how we can use um, these features in our recount. And for you, you will be choosing any animal you like. It doesn't have to be a dog. It doesn't have to be a cat. It could be anything. But consider how you can write about telltale clues in your recount, like what happened to Eric, like what happened to me when I turned into a cat, um, so that it it's an interesting read for the reader. What you may wish to do is you may wish to pause the video so that you've got these conjunctions handy and you can use them in your writing. Or even better still, you could pause the video here and you could look at your checklist, especially once you're finished. It will give you a bit of a tick list to see whether you've included these things. Good luck, guys. And I hope you enjoy writing your recount today. Feel free to email me. As always, if you do get stuck on anything and equally, the teachers would love, love to um, read your recounts so if possible send a photo email the teacher and um, we'll get back to you have a lovely day see you later